Black Rifle Coffee Company. The greatest coffee company in the world. <laughs> What's the question again? Sorry. <laughs> I blacked out on freedom. Yeah. The hate, the grind, the sweat, the blood, the time, my motivation. I want to talk too long and not be in the conversation. My team been up, way up, ain't nothing less than domination. I got the game, but they want to talk about you and you Motivation. All the hating that they doing, that shit motivation. Staying winning, nothing less. Ain't no consolation. Used to tell me that I couldn't. That's my motivation. Yeah, my motivation. I'd always considered joining the military as a kid. I just didn't know what branch of service I was gonna join. And then one of my friends in high school goes, man, you gotta check out this movie called Black Hawk Down. Army Rangers, let's party. From there, I was set on becoming an Army Ranger. When I joined the Army at 17, I'd never really been out of Santa Barbara, California, so my experience was drinking from a fire hose in the world of life. I'm actually super thankful that I joined at that age because it really gave me the ability to open up to this whole new world I'd never experienced before that and really paved my way as being kind of the free spirit and run and gunner I am today in business. Donning my, my tan beret at, during graduation, you're like, I'm a badass, I'm this ranger. And then I showed up and uh, I got humbled real quick. That really put in perspective how much I had to learn and mature before I was ready to run with the big guys. I did five deployments in total with 2nd Ranger Battalion, uh, four to Iraq, one to Afghanistan, um, somewhere over about 400 direct action raids. Mainly we're there to kill or capture high value targets and that involved kicking down doors, explosive breaching, and a lot of running and gunning. One of the shittiest nights of my whole entire life, my team leader and squad leader both were shot and unfortunately were KIA. There were these two guys that I looked up for everything in life. They were my mentors. They had showed me how to be a ranger. They had showed me how to be a man. You know, I joined at 17, and for them to be taken so tragically, they truly changed my whole entire perspective on life and what I wanted to do with it. You have to wake up every morning to say, all these people can't live a life that I can, so I better go f and enjoy it. I better wake up every morning, slap that little stupid depression off my face and go, the sun's bright or it's raining, don't give a f let's go. And it's almost an injustice to the people that have sacrificed to think that they wouldn't want us to live life in such a positive manner. ETS out of the Army, I moved back to Los Angeles, California. And about a year into that, doing executive protection in Los Angeles, I, I was super depressed. And I called one of my friends and he was like, I'm gonna help you get this contracting job. I was terrified, had no clue what I was gonna do, how, how I was gonna pay the bills, but I knew I had to leave. And so I moved back in with my dad and ended up getting a job. I spent about five years as a private military contractor. And during those years, I was tasked with ensuring the safety of intelligence gathering efforts. You know, you have a lot of downtime over as a contractor. And I was on Facebook one day and I saw some girl like spilled her coffee and was like, worst day ever. And immediately I like, it can always be worse. Like you can find the silver lining in life if you have the perspective. So I wrote a song called Champagne Facebook Problems and it was just me poking fun at people who just find the negative. Champagne problems, everyone's got them. So quick complaining. Layman. That kind of gave me the uh, motivation and confidence to see if I could make the 120 you know, Facebook friends that I had laugh a little bit. I'd done about four videos until anything got traction because prior to that I was just kind of making fun about you know, being a guy and silly stuff like that. And I'm like, well the best thing I know is the military. Ultimately that inspired me to write How to Be an Operator. The thing to know is there's a few different types of operators out there. And I'm going to overview a couple just for your knowledge. Ranger smash! That thing blew up really quick and I saw that there was a market for this type of content. That car's in the bolo list, be careful. He got some debris in the road up there about 50 meters tall. Will you shut the hell up? Nothing made me more happy than I'd upload a joke and then I'd walk into my team room to put some body armor on. They're like, I always say that to my wife. I tell her where there's a piece of trash in the road and they think it's an IED. I'm like, I do the same shit, man. Up until then, like if you were in a car and you saw a piece of trash and you told your wife, hey, drive around it, people were like, oh man, he's got some issues. No, this is an individual that trained for years to circumvent this thing in a safe manner. And it's something we should laugh about. People said I couldn't make those jokes, but then everybody in the community goes, oh my God, make those jokes. So I'm gonna listen to my peers and, and honestly, I don't give a f about anybody else if they don't like it. If the military and, and, and veterans are laughing at my stuff, then I can sleep awesome every night. 
And I actually linked up with Jared Taylor. And I was like, that's the kind of guy I want to be around. I want to be around positive, creative guys that just want to create something to showcase to the world. When I was contracting, I would come home for only about a month before I had to redeploy for three months. So we would just create all these crazy skit ideas and videos, and then I would deploy it and slowly trickle them out while I was overseas. So people thought I was just this crazy kid living at home, making these videos, but had no clue I was working for the agency as, as a contractor overseas. Jared at the time was running a small little t-shirt company. Matt, what if we sold a couple t-shirts and we could buy a better mic, we could buy a better camera? It just kind of compounded and we realized, wow, we actually have a business. Jared Taylor and Vincent Rocco Vargas, they're like, let's make a movie, a zombie movie made for veterans by veterans, and it never happened. Not all military movies suck. Con Air, Jarhead, Green Zone, The Hurt Locker. It was bizarre, but it was amazing to see how many people came together in our community and really made it happen. A year and a half later, we were launching in theaters across the United States. But if it wasn't for the veteran community and everybody that rallied around us, it would have never been possible. Really around that point is where I had started creating enough revenue that I could justify walking away from being a contractor. And it was a super scary moment for me. It reminded me of when I quit my job in Los Angeles and took a leap of faith. Hey, this chapter's been an awesome in my life. I'm so thankful for it, but I'm gonna close that and see what chapter three has in it. At the time, we were working with Evan on actually another business, which never succeeded. So we definitely had our failures over the years. We just don't tell anybody about them. Evan reached out and goes, hey guys, I'm like a coffee head. Do you guys mind if I roast some coffee and I could sell it to your apparel company? And that was kind of the stamp and the foundation of what is known today as Black Rifle Coffee. Three knuckle draggers sitting around a, a room filled with whiskey talking about dreams and, and it kind of came true. No matter what transition you have in life, it's difficult. Whether you're transitioning out of a relationship, you're transitioning out of a career, the second we're uncomfortable, your whole body tells you, don't do it, this is wrong, and then you lose motivation. And to be tough in those uncomfortable positions really is what I believe an entrepreneur is. For people that are getting out of the military, you're not gonna know what the future holds. You really just have to put your head down, grind it out, People may look at me and say, wow, success follows that guy. But you are the creator of your own calamity and you're the captain of your soul. You get to choose right now in this moment where your life goes. And no matter what situation has been thrown at me, I react to it in a positive manner, go, what's the solution, and get the mission done. Used to tell me that I couldn't, that's my motivation. Yeah, my motivation.